So in this chapter, we're going to start learning about enterprise structure. What is enterprise structure? How the company is structured in the system? Let me give you an example. If you take the company GE, GE is a pretty big company, right? So GE has GE Healthcare, GE Lighting, and say GE uh, Plastics. There are many different uh, companies inside GE, but let's just take one of these. If you take GE Healthcare, GE Healthcare is again a global company, meaning it does business in the US does business in UK, Canada, India, Singapore, and so on. Now, if you take the US company, the US company has um, sales offices in the West Coast because there are hospitals in the West Coast. There are hospitals in Midwest. There are hospitals in the East Coast, in the South, so on and on. And each sales office contains a whole bunch of groups of people, you know, some people doing a certain line of business. <coughs> Salesman, say Rob's group, does only capital equipment, meaning all the big stuff, right? Like X ray machines or MRI machines and so on. Capital equipment. A Stevens Group does consumables, meaning an X ray equipment requires some tissues, some tubes, or something that's consumed just for that particular X ray for that patient. That's a consumable. Like a syringe is an example of a consumable. A tube is an example of a consumable. You see, the, the entire company is structured in a certain way, you know, in terms of where it's operated, how many different sales orgs it has, or sales offices it has, and in each sales office, how many different groups of sales reps are there. And of course, underneath it, there are so many different sales reps right selling the product this is one part of it another part is I'm just taking us just for the sake of simplicity another part is maybe there's a manufacturing plant somewhere in Wisconsin so in Wisconsin so this is a manufacturing plant so in Wisconsin there is a plant or a factory. There could be one or more than one. You know, one of these factories producing capital equipment, another producing consumables, another producing spare parts, so on and so forth. So each factory will have or can have so many different warehouses. You know, one warehouse in uh, Milwaukee, one warehouse in Waukesha, one warehouse in Brookfield. These are just different cities that might have, um, you know, different warehouses that store the goods that this factory produces. And when you're shipping, say, for example, spare parts for an X-ray machine, they could be shipped out of Brookfield. And when you're shipping an X-ray machine, the entire machine itself, it could be shipped out of Milwaukee. And say, if you're shipping some consumables, it could be shipping out of Waukesha. All right. So what am I trying to say here? The company runs its business using different org structures. In this case, each country represents a company. Because if G Healthcare wants to do business in Singapore, it has to go set up a legal office there and do their business. So it's a company. 
where the profit and loss, the balance sheets, assets, liabilities are maintained at this level. And further downstream, company has plants, one or more than one. Company has warehouses. Company has sales offices. Company has expenses around sales offices. Company has manufacturing expenses. Company is structured in a certain way to represent the structure of the company the entire GE or G healthcare in SAP is done via enterprise structure. So this is the definition of enterprise structure. 